What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next concept with hypothesis testing. We're now gonna talk about one-tailed versus two-tailed tests. And I've briefly mentioned these in previous videos, but now we're gonna be going into more depth. So, so far with examples I've been showing you, I've been mostly showing you two-tailed examples up until this point. And the way I like to think of two-tailed tests so if we draw the acceptance versus rejection region, so here we are accepting the null or failing to reject the null, and then here we are rejecting the null in this area. And then over here we have the critical values. Basically, the reason why this here is a two-tailed test is because there are two rejection regions. Okay, or um, let's say two critical values. That's another way you could tell. It's a two-tailed test, right? These two critical values here. And you could recognize two-tailed tests from a word problem with the format of the null and the alternative hypothesis. So we got the null, we got the alternative. Basically, whenever it's in the format the population average is equal to something, population mean is equal, and then the alternative is that it's not equal. Right, so if you remember, we did an example with houses where the average up until a certain point was 400,000, and then we wanted to test, someone came along and said, no, they don't believe it's 400,000 anymore. And so there were two possibilities, either it could be a lot greater than 400,000, you would reject the null then, or it could be a lot less than 400,000, you reject the null then. So there's two rejection regions, hence a two-tailed test, two critical values. However, you can also have one-tailed tests, and there's actually two kinds of one-tailed tests. So let's put a general title here, and they could be either left tailed test or right tailed. And we're gonna do more specific examples in this video, but to give you a brief overview, basically left tail test means there's only one critical value. So here's the mean and it's gonna to be to the left of the mean, which is gonna be here. So the critical value And the rejection region is over here. And then we accept, or we fail to reject the null over here. So this is the reject the null. So basically, uh, if the rejection region is on the left side, it's called a left tail test. And notice it's a one tail test because there's one rejection region or one critical value. And the way that the null and the alternative are going to look like this in this example is the alternative you're going to reject when the null is a lot less than a certain value because so far the null is accepted to either be equal to or greater than, right? That's when you are accepting the null hypothesis and you are rejecting it when there's more evidence to pointing towards the alternative, which is when the mean is less than. And you're gonna have certain problems where you wanna just focus on one side, and I'm gonna show you that very soon. Okay, so a right tail test, same thing, so we got the average in the middle, and so the rejection region is on the right side. So here we are rejecting the null, here we are accepting the null. So we got the null, we got the alternative. So the alternative in this case, if we find that the sample average is a lot greater than what the null is, then we're gonna reject. And so the null right now is that the population mean is uh, equal or less than something. 
right? So here we want to see if we're going to be a lot less than the population um, mean. Here we want to see if we're going to be a lot greater than the population mean. So these are the two different formats for a one-tail test and their respective null and alternative hypothesis formats. So let's do an example here. Let's say that Amazon is testing a new delivery system to cut down delivery time and wants to see if it should be implemented company-wide. The current mean delivery time is two days for all products in Amazon. Let's say it's believed right now to be two days. So with Differentiating between one-tail test versus two-tail test, this is where it could get a little tricky because you have to really read the question and apply it to a real-life scenario to know, are you working with a two-tail test, are you working with a left-tail test, or a right-tail test? So notice in this case, we're not just looking for whether the delivery time is going to be different than two days. Because different than two days means it could be greater than two days or less than two days. We're specifically looking whether the delivery time is going to be less than two days, only less. We don't care if it's going to be greater. If it's going to be greater, then we're not going to implement this system. So when I get questions like this, the first thing I like to start off with is trying to get my null and my alternative hypothesis. And more specifically, I actually like to start with the alternative hypothesis first. So we're checking whether this average of two is going to be cut down, right? Whether the delivery time is going to be cut down. So we're testing whether that average is going to be less than two now. So that's the alternative hypothesis. And right now, the mean is two, but because our alternative hypothesis is one-sided, then the null has to be one-sided as well. So the null currently is greater than or equal to two. That's what the current delivery system has given us. And we want to know if this new delivery system is going to cut it down to less than two days. So what's going to happen is Amazon is going to implement this system at certain orders. And then they're going to take a sample of orders, let's say a sample of like a thousand orders, and see is that delivery time being cut down. And if it is, then there's more evidence pointing towards the alternative hypothesis and then they're going to implement the new system. So if we show this on a diagram, then two is in the middle. We're going to have some kind of critical value, right? We're not going to be getting that in this video. We're going to show you how to do that in future videos, but notice that this here, is where we are rejecting that null hypothesis or rejecting that old system. And here is where we are failing to reject the old system or we're currently, uh, we continue to accept it, right? So this critical value, let's say it's like, I don't know, uh, 1.5 days right, from the sample size. Remember, this is going to depend on a lot of things. I'm going to show you how to get this. But um, yeah, let's say, uh, let's say that it's 1.5 days. So if we take a sample and that sample mean is going to be less than 1.5 days, then we can reject the null. And when we reject the null in this scenario, what that means is that we have evidence that the new delivery system does cut down delivery time. And so the conclusion in this word problem, if we reject the null, is that we implement the new system. Right, but if we fail to reject the null, then it means we keep old system because we don't have enough evidence that that delivery time is being cut down, right? So this is a scenario. This is an example of a left-tailed test. And actually, one more thing I want to go over with this scenario 
is describing what's going to be a type 1 error and what's going to be a type 2 error relating specifically to this problem here. So if you remember, type 1 error is what? We reject the null when null is true. So for this scenario, we reject the null when the null is true. So what that's going to mean is that we're going to implement the new system, right? That's when we reject the null. When it doesn't cut delivery time. So that would be an example of a type 1 error in this case. We're going to implement the system, right? We are rejecting the null. We're rejecting the old system when in reality it doesn't really cut down delivery time. Maybe there was some kind of like bias in the sample or you didn't take enough of a sample. So that would be a type 1 error. Type 2 error, what is that? That is when we fail to reject the null when the null in reality is false. So in this specific scenario, it would be we don't implement system, don't implement new system when it would cut delivery time. So sometimes you're going to see questions like this as well where they give you a specific scenario and you got to take that scenario and put it into words relating to that scenario of what a type 1 and a type 2 error is. Let's do another scenario here. So let's say the average talking time of an iPhone is believed to be 10 hours. The head of technology at Apple is furious and claims the technology is better than what most think and that talking time is greater than 10 hours. So Let's start with a null and an alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis, what I usually like to start with, is that the talking time is greater than 10 hours. That's what the head of technology is claiming. So the null right now is that it's either 10 or less. Right? So that's the null and the alternative in this specific case. Right? So we're testing for this. The, the alternative hypothesis is always what we're testing for. Right? So we're testing, the head of technology wants to test that it's greater than 10 hours. And so notice that this here is an example of a right tail test because right now average is 10 and head of technology wants to prove that it's not 10. So we're going to be rejecting the null on the right side here, right? They don't care if it's less than 10. They want to show that it's greater than 10. So the critical value is going to be greater than that current uh, accepted average for all the iPhones. So this here is the acceptance region. All right, so just an example of a scenario, a right tail test, right? This is a right tailed. Where that rejection region is on the right side. So you got to read these questions very carefully, right? And kind of figure out in your mind, are we testing for whether it's uh, greater than an average, less than an average, like the previous example, or just different? than the average. And remember, different is when there's two rejection regions. But in this case, we're just checking whether it's greater than 10. And so let's talk about what a type 1 error in this scenario would be and a type 2 error. 
So a type one error is when we reject the null when the null is true. So in this specific scenario, rejecting the null is believing the head of technology. Right? Sometimes I like to write these uh, little brackets bef uh, beside rejecting the null and accepting the null. Right? So if we're rejecting the null hypothesis, then we are believing the head of technology that the battery life is going to be greater than 10 hours. So type 1 error would be rejecting the null or believing the head of technology when in fact it's the talking time is not actually greater than 10 hours. So type 1 error would be believing the head of technology when talking time isn't greater than 10 hours. Right? There might be better ways to word this. I'm just kind of freestyling this to uh, be uh, honest, but uh, hopefully you get where I'm coming from. So type 1 error, you are believing the head of technology that the talking time is greater than 10 hours when it really isn't greater than 10 hours. And type 2 error is when you fail to reject the null uh, when the null is actually false, right? So you accept the null when it's false. And so accepting the null is not believing head of technology. So type 2 error is not believing the head of technology their claim when the talking time uh, is greater than 10 hours when in fact we should believe them right the talking time is actually greater than 10 hours but we conclude that it's not there's not enough evidence showing that it's greater than 10 hours Right? So an example of a type 1, type 2 error for this scenario. So that's it for the video. So again, when you're reading these, make sure you're, as you read more and more questions, you're going to see pattern. But at the beginning, really look for what are you testing? Are you just testing whether the mean is different? So two rejection regions. So that'd be a two-tailed test. Are you testing whether the mean is going to be greater than a certain number, which would be like this, a one-tail test, a right-tail test, or are you testing that the mean is going to be less? And that would be a left-tail test, a one-tail test as well. So read the questions very carefully.